Hello class, Mr. Linder here. Let's talk about acid-base physiology. In this lab, you're going to be doing a PhysioX experiment that allows you to look at pH balance using the respiratory system and the urinary system. And then you're also going to be doing a lab that looks at hypo and hyperventilation as it relates to CO2 mixing in water. Before we get to CO2 mixing in water, let's take a closer look at how you calculate pH. So you're probably familiar with the pH scale. And the pH scale uh, basically ranges from a value of 1 to 14, with 7 being the neutral value. A pH of 7 is based off of pure water. But how do they get the value of 7? Well, there's a pH equation. So pH is equal to the log times 1 over the hydrogen ion concentration. So if you know the hydrogen ion concentration, you can determine the pH of a particular solution. Let's say that the hydrogen ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. You can take that value and plug it into the equation, and you would get a pH equal to 7, which is the value for water. And then we base things that are acidic, being less than 7, or having more hydrogen ion concentration, and values that are greater than 7, being basic, those, value, those uh, solutions that have a hydrogen ion concentration that is less than uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. So for example, if we had 1 times 10 to the minus 4th, we could calculate uh, what pH that is equivalent to. So what you would do is you could take 1 times 10 to the minus 4th, which is really 0 0.0001. You can plug that into the hydrogen ion concentration. 1 divided by 0 0.0001 is 10,000. And so what you have here is the log of 10,000, which is equal to a pH of 4. And we know that a pH of 4 is in the acidic range. And that's because 1 times 10 to the minus 4th is a larger hydrogen ion concentration than 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. And so if you have more hydrogen ions, you have something that is more acidic. And if you have less hydrogen ions, you have something that is more basic. So that's how you calculate pH. But what about carbon dioxide? And how does carbon dioxide affect the pH uh, within the human body? So an equation that you need to learn is carbon dioxide mixing in water. And this is something that affects pH uh, in, our, uh, in, our, in our body uh, on a daily basis. So our cells uh, produce carbon dioxide uh, as a byproduct of metabolism. And so we've been studying that. And so as cells produce carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide is going to enter into our circulatory system. And our circulatory system is made of water. And so some of that CO2 is just going directly into the plasma. It's going directly into the water. And it's going through this equation. Carbon dioxide mixes with water to produce carbonic acid. And then carbonic acid can dissociate into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. And as the hydrogen ions change, that can change the pH within the body. Now, most of the carbon dioxide, though, is going to enter into red blood cells that are inside the circulatory system. And red blood cells have an enzyme that can make this reaction go much faster. And so that enzyme, CA for the abbreviation, is carbonic anhydrase. And so about 70% of the carbon dioxide that enters into our circulatory system actually enters into the red blood cells and it goes through this reaction. So we have carbon dioxide 
entering into the red blood cell and it's being converted using carbonic anhydrase into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. Okay. Now some of the CO2 can also interact with hemoglobin. So we have HbCO2. Okay. And then as I said earlier, some of that carbon dioxide just goes directly into uh, the blood plasma. But the majority of our CO2 becomes hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. And as we'll learn later on, bicarbonate actually can leave uh, the red blood cells and bicarbonate can actually act as a buffer uh, in our circulatory system. And it helps us to maintain pH balance. So carbon dioxide, though mixing in water, actually helps us to produce hydrogen ions and the production of hydrogen ions can actually alter uh, our pH within our body. Le Chatelier's principle can actually help us to predict which direction this reaction will go. As you may know, if there's an increase in carbon dioxide, if you have an increase in a reactant for an equation, you can shift that equation to the right. And when that happens, you're going to produce more hydrogen ions. So there's an increase in hydrogen ions. And if there's an increase in hydrogen ions, that's going to decrease the pH of a solution. At the same time, if there was a decrease in carbon dioxide, then this equation would shift to the left. You'd be taking your products and combining them together. So you'd have hydrogen ions combining with bicarbonate. And that would produce carbonic acid, H2CO3. And then, of course, that would become the CO2 and water, and that would help to increase our carbon dioxide back to normal because that was there was a decrease in carbon dioxide. So if your cells are metabolizing more, if there's more metabolism going on, let's say you're exercising uh, more, then you're going to see acidosis taking place. Uh, if you are hyperventilating uh, and blowing off uh, larger amounts of carbon dioxide, that's going to actually decrease your hydrogen ions in solution, which is going to make your pH go up, make it more basic, and we call that alkalosis. So what I want you guys to do is work on your PhysioX this week, and your PhysioX is actually going to cover both respiratory and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis conditions so that you can better understand uh, pH balance uh, and better understand this equation of carbon dioxide mixing in water. Another thing I want to introduce you to is this Henderson-Hasselbach equation. pH is equal to 6.1 plus the log of the bicarbonate concentration, bicarbonate concentration, divided by 0 0.03, which is the solubility uh, constant for carbon dioxide, and PCO2, which represents the partial pressure uh, of carbon dioxide in our circulatory system. On average, partial pressure of CO2 uh, in circulation is about 40 millimeters of mercury. And then the 0 0.03 is going to be a constant. Now, what this Henderson-Hasselbach equation can allow us to do uh, is it can allow us to actually calculate pH. If we knew the bicarbonate concentration and we know the partial pressure of CO2 and we already know the constant, then we could use that information to calculate pH. What we can also do, though, is if we know the pH of a solution, we can work back to determine bicarbonate concentration as it relates to carbon dioxide. So for example, if we know the pH of a solution, let's say that we're looking at the pH of blood. pH of blood is around 7.4. If we plug in 7.4 for pH, we have an equation that looks like this. 7.4 is equal to 6.1 plus the log of bicarbonate concentration 
divided by approximately 1. This will simplify the equation for us. It's not exactly 1, but if you take 40 times 0 0.03, you get 1.2. And we know that this is an average number, so we know CO2 will be less than or greater than this value. And so if we want to simplify this equation, though, we can say that this portion of the equation is approximately 1. And so what we have here is 7.4 is equal to 6.1 plus the log of the bicarbonate concentration. And so now we can essentially calculate a ratio of bicarbonate to essentially one carbon dioxide. How do we do that? We subtract 6.1 from both sides. Subtract 6.1. That gives us 1.3 is equal to the log of the bicarbonate concentration. Okay, so we have concentration of bicarbonate. If you want to get rid of log, you take the anti-log. That's the 10 to the x value, because okay? log is base value of 10. Okay? So 10 to the x value, 10 to the x value. So essentially what we have is 10 to the 1.3 power is equal to the bicarbonate concentration. And so if you want to figure that out on your calculator, you can either find the 10 to the x key. That's usually the second function above your log key. Or you can simply do 10, use the caret uh, key. That's that upside down V. <clears throat> Type in 1.3. You're saying 10 to the 1.3 power, which is about 19.95. <clears throat> so if we round that out, that's about 20. And so what we have here is we have essentially a 20 bicarbonate to one carbon dioxide ratio. We have a 20 to one ratio of bicarbonate to carbon dioxide at a pH of 7.4. And what you can do is you can use other pHs. You could calculate the ratio of 7.1, how much bicarbonate would you have for every one carbon dioxide? You could look at alkalosis conditions of 7.8, plug in that number and do the calculation and so forth and so forth. To finish up the laboratory, I want you guys to use the data for 8.3 in your lab. And this is a hypo versus hyper ventilation experiment. And what you're basically looking at is two beakers where you have a straw placed into the beaker and you're actually exhaling carbon dioxide through the straw into the solution. Okay, So you're exhaling CO2 into the beakers. In the first experiment, in the first part, okay, you're hypoventilating. That means you're breathing slowly. So this is slow exhalations. When you're hyperventilating, you're breathing fast. So this is fast exhalations. And what the data is going to show you is the change in pH <clears throat> over time. Okay? So as time passes, how is the pH changing? And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to see the pH changing because you're going to be using an indicator known as phenol red. Phenol red is red when it's a basic solution and it turns yellow when it's an acidic solution. And so I posted a video for you to watch where it shows phenol red turning from red to yellow. And we know the solutions are going to turn yellow because as you add CO2 to water, we just learned that when you add CO2 to water, you're going to produce hydrogen ions. And so that changes the pH of the solution, and therefore that's going to change the color of the solution. So take a look at the data. Make sure you graph the data and answer all of your review questions. I hope this helps. Have a great day. Bye.